Hi, I welcome you back to Interview Mantra India's series of videos on embedded systems. I hope you have seen my first video on introduction to embedded systems. Now, before telling you further on embedded systems, I'd like to share my experience and my journey on embedded systems. When I started embedded systems, just like you, I was very much interested in learning more about embedded systems. But I was lost. I didn't know what to start with and where to start with. What microcontroller should I use? How should I use it? How to program a microcontroller? What does a microcontroller do? What, are the, what is necessary for a microcontroller to make it work? Is microcontroller programming same as computer programming? So these were some of the many questions that I had in my mind. So I am assuming some of the questions that you might be having and I'm going to answer those questions one by one in the second video of embedded systems. So let's get started. So embedded systems is all about programming a microcontroller chip. Now what is a microcontroller chip and what are the different types of microcontroller chips available? Before I answer that question I'm going to tell you how is the whole process of embedded system programming works? What is the first step, second step and the last step? Here's how it goes. First, we are going to have, we are going to, uh, we, are, we will have some kind of requirements for an embedded system to do. We have a set of tasks that we, we need our system to perform. Let us take a very simple example of a digital clock. We want to build our own digital clock. So that's our requirements. Now, what do we need to do this? All right. We need a display which displays the time. Now, we need a power supply obviously for powering the circuit. And next, how is the display going to know what the time is? Who is going to maintain the time? Now, the microcontroller chip should have the program to note down the time, the current time and then it should be able to publish this data to the display. I hope you are understanding what I said. I just said that the microcontroller programmer, the microcontroller, the chip is going to have a program that was written by us, the clock program which keeps a track of time continuously every second every minute and continuously publishes the time every second to the display so the display doesn't have a brain of its own it's just going to display whatever input it gets from the microcontroller now the question is how are you going to write the microcontroller program how are you go in in which program are you going to write how are you going to put this program inside this chip now here is how it works we are going to write the microcontroller program in a computer and we are going to write it and compile it in the computer we get a code a byte code called as the hex code this hex code is put into the microcontroller using a device called a programmer a microcontroller programmer is a device that connects the microcontroller and the computer you can think of it like this you have written something in the computer now it has to be transferred to your microcontroller how are you going to do that let's take the example of your mobile let's say you have some pictures in your computer you want to transfer them to your mobile how do you do that you have a usb cable to do that you have a software to do that you can copy there in the software and it comes into this so it's pretty much similar you have some kind of cable or an interface and that's called the microcontroller programmer and you have a software for programming similar to the software that you use for your mobile phones but technically speaking putting this microcontroller byte code the hex code the code that the microcontroller can understand into the microcontroller this process is called burning or fusing so you should call it as burning the chip, burning the microcontroller. And 
Let me clarify more on hex code. You might be wondering what is hex code. So, hex code is a hexadecimal code that is understandable to a microcontroller. We may not understand that, but the computer understands that language. And we write a program in a language that we understand. For example, we have option to write either in C, embedded C, or in assembly language. Assembly language in embedded C are languages that are human understandable. So they are understandable to you and me. We can debug that program, understand that program. If I share my program to you, you can correct it. You can add something on your own. And hexadecimal code, this is being converted. The, the C program or the assembly code gets converted into a hexadecimal byte code. It's like the exe file on your computer. You don't know what exe file is. When you run your C program, you get an exe file and you can't open an exe file and understand what's there inside an exe file. Of course, you can execute it, but you can't open it in a text editor. That's what I'm speaking. So this byte code, the hex code is similar to an exe file. This byte code is in a language that the microcontroller can understand. Now this is on the computer and your microcontroller is here. How are you going to push it there? This is where your microcontroller program com programmer comes into place. So you should be having a microcontroller programmer ready, a hardware and a software that you will be able to use so that you can send this code to the microcontroller. And once you send the microcontroller code inside this byte code into the microcontroller, your microcontroller is ready. As and when you switch on the power of the microcontroller, it starts running. Your program that you have written starts running. So this is how the whole thing works in embedded systems. I hope this video was interesting. Keep coming back. In the next video, we are going to discuss about types of microcontrollers and which one to choose and how to go about. Thank you for being with me in this video. This is Sridhar Jamala Maraka from Interview Mantra India.